Wow, you guys, almost $200 a month on Patreon. You guys don't owe me a dime, yet so many of you have decided to send a little money my way every month to support who I am, what I do, and the show that I make. You guys have no idea how much that means to me. You're all freaking amazing. Thank you all so much for sending in that extra support. But that's actually why it's taken me so long to make this milestone video, because it's like, what do I even do to commemorate such an event? Like, what would even do it justice? But you know, that got me thinking that a lot of you guys are here thanks to the effort of other video producers who've sent you my way, either by telling you guys about me in their videos, or through their websites, or from other places. So this video is more than just a quick shout out to them. We're going to be taking a look at their shows, show you guys some clips from them, and give them a chance to talk to the camera about what they do and why they even watch my show to begin with. So without further ado, let's get started. Since Addictive and Prism Leisure didn't exactly have a presence here in the US, the crystal was instead released over here by Cinemaware, a company known for their amazing movie-like experience in games, most notably Defender of the Crown. In fact, it even states on the box spine that it is a Cinemaware interactive movie, as well as implying the same thing on the back of the box with popcorn and film strips. But I'm here to tell you this is an outright lie, because this game has practically nothing to do with Cinemaware or their normal movie-like gaming experiences. Nope, in the crystal you become Dance's Freak. <sighs> Let's start things off with the guy most of you probably already know about. Lazy Game Reviews is a show started by Clint Basinger, also known as Freakin' D, way back in April of 2008, which puts the start of his series just a few months after my first attempt to start Ancient DOS games, and a couple years prior to my second attempt. Though originally his episodes were spaced very far apart from each other, and thus there wasn't that much to see. The whole notion of Clint's show originally was to do snarky reviews as lazily as possible, while still putting something together that made for a reasonable look at the material in question i.e. not getting facts wrong and actually presenting important information for sake of collecting and such. However, Clint's breakthrough came in the form of a video detailing The Sims 3 when it was still brand new. And as we all know, The Sims has been quite the popular series the whole way through. So being one of the first people to do decent videos related to The Sims 3 really helped jumpstart Clint's channel. Heck, for the longest time, he was only getting a fraction of the hits on his retro gaming videos as he was on his Sims videos. Now, even though I myself am not a fan of the Sims games, I've watched every video Clint's made related to them because he's actually able to take stuff I'm not interested in and provide interesting commentary and information related to it. Heck, one of my favorite moments in any of his videos, not just his Sims stuff, is this one right here. Do expansions or mods for The Sims 3 work with it? Nope! It has nothing to do with The Sims 3, remember? There may be mods someday, but as of now, they're incompatible. Is there a console version? Nope! At least not yet. Will my computer run it? Nope! Nah, I'm just kidding, it probably will. It's easier to run than The Sims 3 due to its restricted gameplay, so just check out this website for more information. Is it an action role-playing game or a real Sims game? Nope! Yeah, it's both and neither at the same time. It has role-playing elements, but it also has Sims elements. It's really its own thing. Can your Sim kill other Sims? <laughs> Clint's collection of games and hardware is very impressive and includes stuff as new as the latest AAA titles and as old as the IBM 5150 and all its oversized monochrome glory. Actually, technically even older than that, but you get the point. He epitomizes the idea of being able to enjoy every generation of gaming, an idea I can certainly get behind. Which isn't to say everything he owns is the greatest game ever. There are lots and lots of bad Doom clones, but this one is special. I've never seen a shooter with as little everything as Depth Dwellers. Well, it's obviously a budget title, so you can't expect much of it, but wow. Winter Race 3D is one broken freaking game. I've seen better gameplay on a vending machine. So around my 35th episode of Ancient DOS Games in February of 2011, I saw a massive viewership spike. It turned out that Clint had really latched on to my show, as it was one of the first things he posted about on his then new blog, as he had watched my episode on Mech Warrior, not really feeling too nostalgic about it, then watched the very next episode on Earth Siege and called it, quote, a mental lightning strike giving him the sudden urge to whip out his discs for the game and give it a run on one of his old Pentium systems. 
And we've since collaborated a couple times towards videos, the first of which was an April Fool's prank we pulled on our viewers, where I tried to take the reins of his show and vice versa. Needless to say, we both screwed everything up, because hey, that's what happens, man. But suffice it to say, it actually went over fairly well for the most part. Let's say for a handful of Clint's viewers who clearly didn't have a sense of humor. We also did another video together a little more recently on his channel, where we tried playing something multiplayer together. We wanted to do a DOS game together, but ran into about a million problems trying to get either decent frame rates or syncing to behave. So we had to go with something a little more modern. Oh wow. Holy crap, yes. Oh. Well, I know how to respond to that one. Yeah, simple baseball bat would suffice, I'm sure. Or just this. Or that. Oh, it. Oh! <laughs> it's a tiny for... little piece of land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the last possible sliver of land. That's great. Holy crap! That guy jumped so far, <laughs> I forgot! <laughs> <laughs> well, look at it this way, you survived. <laughs> Anyways, let's have Clint do the talking for a little. Greetings, my name is Clint Basinger of Lazy Game Reviews, and I do the show Lazy Game Reviews. And what is that? Well, uh, as you might be able to tell from the background and... The shirt and such. I review PC games. I love MS DOS stuff. Anything to do with classic computers in general, really. Uh, odd hardware and software, and occasionally I also go and do videos where I try to find some of this stuff at local and not so local thrift stores, and uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff like that. So that's what I do. Why do I watch and spread the word of and support ancient DOS games? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, DOS. DOS is good. Anybody spreading any kind of word or love or appreciation for MS-DOS, the games, the technical stuff, the culture around it, they're good in my book, and ancient DOS games has been doing this for a long time and has done it very, very well. And it's got a very different way of doing it than I do, and I think there's a lot of value in that. Uh, mine tends to be more... No, oh, I don't know, random. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more snarky in its commentary and uh, Ancient DOS games. You go to that and you know what you're getting. You're going to get something very technically involved. Uh, the, a very, I don't know, game developer kind of mindset. The guy's been developing games for years, so he has a different perspective on it than I ever could. I mean, maybe I could get there, but uh, I don't have to, because he's already done, done it for me. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of awesome. And uh, the other reason is he's also covered a lot of games that I either have not covered yet because I just haven't gotten around to them, or they're like really, really intimidating, and uh, for me to cover them, I'm far too lazy to do so, or just don't have the time because I do a couple or few videos a week, so yeah, there's a little bit of a restriction there. And so somebody's wanting to see a game or a lot of information on a game that he's covered and I haven't, oh man, I'm all over that because... Well, you know, he's probably done it better than I have anyway. So yeah, there's that. Ancient DOS Games. Lazy Game Review's seal of approval. I am moving my head around when I talk. And turning into William Shatner. Oh my. Actually, I think his Duke Nukem is far superior to his Shatner. But in any case, if you want to check out Lazy Game Reviews or any of the other videos Clint's made, simply head on over to his YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash user slash freaking D. Or you can check out his blog, along with some other musings, at www.lazygamereviews.com. The way that I connect the Amiga to the outside world is with an old 802.11b wireless network card, PCMCIA goes in the side of the Amiga and gives it wireless networking. Just like that. Alright, with the card inserted, we're at the workbench desktop. Let's open up the workbench drive. Go into the Miami folder. And Miami DX um, is a TCP IP stack for the Amiga. We'll fire it up. And click online. And with that running, we can put that away and try and connect to something. Everyone has a different way of doing videos. 
Clint's approach is sarcastic yet informative. My approach is highly technical. However, some people prefer a more raw approach, and for those of you who enjoy videos like that, Squall Strife series Retro Swim is probably right up your alley. And no, his real name's not actually the same as the Final Fantasy VIII character, but he doesn't go parading his real name around, so I'm going to respect his privacy. In any case, Retro Swim is a much slower paced series dedicated to old retro hardware and software, not just related to gaming or computers. Heck, his very first episode covered a Casio Databank watch of all things, which I can actually relate to since I used to wear a similar watch myself. Until I decided that changing the batteries once a year, losing all the stored data in the process, and not being able to wear it in the rain were kind of counterintuitive to wearing a timepiece in the first place. In terms of why Squall Strife doesn't have a huge number of episodes despite his series being a couple of years old now, it's because Retro Swim isn't something Squall Strife makes because he's trying to build an audience or make a living doing videos. He does these videos simply because he feels he has interesting information and history to share with people about all this old stuff. And a couple good examples of this come to mind with his more recent episodes. One of them shows that he's very skilled with modding and hardware, as he spends the video modding a Sega CD with a Universal BIOS, modding a Saturn to play both PAL and NTSC games, and on top of all that, he manages to convert an old Genesis controller into an Amiga CD32 controller. The other video is a look at various different ports of Thexter, including the remake on PSN. And it's interesting to see how the game has changed between versions in order to accommodate the various hardware limitations of the different systems of the time. Plus, the moment he got up to the Famicom version, he pretty much said exactly the same thing I was thinking. You may be thinking that I've skipped the Famicom version, but uh, no. I'm doing a whole section just on the Famicom version. You'll see why. Famicom Thexter. Where do I even begin? How about with the fact that you don't have a laser anymore? No, you have this projectile weapon. Only three of the projectiles can be on the screen at once. They do aim at the enemies, but enemies move so fast that what's the point? In fact, I think this game would be easier if the projectiles went in a straight line. You could uh, just sort of jump up and shoot straight at them that way. Might actually make the game easier than this piece of crap. Well, all that said, I'm not really a huge fan of his series, but only because I'm not really into slow-paced stuff. He has lots of interesting things to talk about all the same, and has been improving upon the quality of his videos every step of the way. Just like all of us, really. Besides, the guy himself is freaking awesome. He's one of the top patrons of my show on Patreon, and we often have stuff to talk about over on the Vogons forums that we both frequent, as he always has plenty of insights into retro hardware and software, and he's provided me with useful information on more than one occasion. But the point is, the guy makes videos because he likes making them, and those are always the best kinds of videos, whether you're a fan of them or not. And I'm sure he's got some insights to say on his own accord, too. Hey guys, uh, my name's Brendan and I make Retro Swim. When I got started, I just uploaded a few random videos just showing some of the stupid stuff that I did, uh, like running DOSBox on a Raspberry Pi, putting a Vibra sound card into a 286 portable or something stupid like that. But I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, so I went down to the store, bought myself uh, an inexpensive video camera and started to make retro swim episodes. I started off with the Casio data bank. It was a long time ago now. Strange to think about. I have a fairly wide uh, range of interests when it comes to vintage technology. Uh, and I think my channel reflects that. I've got videos about games, systems, computers, mods, and all sorts of related stuff. I probably wouldn't have gotten into doing YouTube videos if I hadn't seen uh, Ancient DOS games and really enjoyed it. Uh, I used to sort of feel like if your videos weren't flashy and witty and swearing and comic genius and that, people wouldn't watch it. Um, but then I saw Chris's videos and he showed me that if you just relax and be yourself, you'll have a good time and people will enjoy it. Uh, I think the thing that I enjoy most about Ancient DOS games is just how humble and down to earth it is uh, compared to some other channels out there. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I don't know, it's comforting, I guess, just to hear someone talk about games from a genuine place. And the games themselves are really awesome too, which helps 
So uh, that's why I enjoy Ancient Dust games. So if you guys want to check out his videos, simply head on over to his YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash user slash retroswim. He doesn't really have a website per se, but he is in charge of a website dedicated to archiving old driver files so that people trying to get their old hardware working at the software level are able to do so. And that can be found at www.vogonsdrivers.com. Hello and welcome to Das Nostalgia. Emma and Tolina invite you to the wonderful world of MS-DOS gaming. The biggest improvements over the original game are obvious. The 256 color VGA graphics are used very effectively. Each level has a very different color scheme. Scrolling backgrounds, foreground objects and plenty of animations. The action is accompanied by catchy music courtesy of Bobby Prince, whose other music credits include Commander King games, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom 1 and 2, and other great titles. The one thing that immediately strikes you as epic when you start learning about the people behind the videos you watch is just how global everything really is. I'm from Canada, Clint's from the United States, Squall Strife's from Australia, and next on the agenda is Anatoly Shashkin of DOS Nostalgia, who was originally born and raised in Russia, though nowadays he lives in the US. Now, this actually gives Anatoly a very unique advantage as far as DOS gaming is concerned, because the variety of games he grew up with were different from what most of us would have grown up with around the same time. Not to mention he would have had access to games that never really saw the light of day elsewhere in the world. Anatoly had actually started DOS Nostalgia a year before my second go at ADG, with his first episode going live in February of 2009. Though at first he only got a few videos out before stuff had to be sorted out in real life, and it would then be roughly three years before his updates became more regular again. I mean, keeping in mind that not every video he releases is an episode of DOS Nostalgia, as he does other videos too. DOS Nostalgia itself is kind of like a mix between my own style and Squall Strife's style, being somewhere in the middle in terms of pace and content. Though as the title might suggest, he tends to cover DOS games. And going through Anatoly's videos again has actually reminded me of just how different nostalgia can be for all of us, as he's looked at a bunch of titles I either never knew about as a kid, or never really played, such as Robocop 3, based off the movie of the same name. Plus, even though he mostly talks about games to a technical level like I do, he does indeed have a sense of humor. One rather useless feature that this game inherited from its flight simulator roots is the so-called cinematic views. All of them are completely useless. No matter how cool some of the views are in the drive-in section, all of them obstruct your view, so you won't be using them. In the first-person shooter levels, the first cinematic view is that of Robocop's ass. Maybe to remind us of what we thought of the film itself. Lately, Anatoly's been focusing less on DOS Nostalgia as a video series and more as a podcast series, as he has released a number of podcasts, both as direct MP3 downloads and on YouTube, where he's often joined by a special guest and together they talk about something related to old DOS gaming. Many of the guests he's had on his podcast are people you may even know, such as Jim Leonard, one of the original co-founders of the Moby Games website, Ben Chandler, who's been involved with a variety of modern games, doing everything from programming to QA and artwork and more, and even Clint's made a guest appearance. So let's see what Anatoly has to say about everything. Hello, good people of the internet. I am Anatoly Shashkin, and you might know me as uh, Das Nostalgic. I run a YouTube channel called Das Nostalgia, um, which started out as uh, sort of reviews of games, but now not so much. It's mostly at the moment I'm concentrating on uh, a podcast as well as just other interesting sort of tidbits like playthroughs of Russian games and just interesting sort of CD game installers, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I don't think of it uh, exactly as a show, as more just a place to find interesting tidbits about DOS games and most of my activity is currently actually on Twitter, but I'm actually here today to talk about uh, Ancient DOS games, a show that I really really like. I personally feel that DOS gaming is kind of shunned, often people in retro gaming communities specifically pretend like it doesn't uh, really exist for some reason. DOS and PC gaming actually has a sort of interesting world of full of vast variety of games and uh, genres and just interesting experiments and uh, games that like, like no other. I think it's a very important piece of history, not just gaming history, but just history in general. Chris and his show is, is the only show that managed for years 
to consistently put out uh, quality content you know on the weekly basis there, there is no other show that does DOS exclusive stuff on the weekly basis a big part of it is uh, the shareware market especially really interesting uh, for me it represents that part of history that I feel very often is ignored rather unfairly we need more DOS stuff we need more people representing it. stand up and proudly say I am a DOS gamer on Twitter or something you can find me on Twitter at DOS nostalgic I would uh, very much like to hear your story thank you and goodbye I swear I'm not the blame for all of those cuts, but still, if you want to check out DOS Nostalgia or any of the other videos Anatoly's uploaded, simply head on over to his YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash user slash DOS Nostalgic. Or you can also check out his stuff straight from his website at www.dosnostalgia.com. And no, that C in the YouTube link is not a typo. But what good is gambling if you don't win? What if you just end up in debt? Well, thankfully, the video game industry heard our financial pleas and gave us Super Caesar's Palace for the Super Nintendo. Oh, the wonderment of Super Caesar's Palace. I can hardly contain myself. The game starts out with a funky little tune. In fact, it's one of the things I remember most about booting up the game, the intro music. I wrote some lyrics to it when I was younger. I'm sure they're still really impressive. Ahem. Super Caesar's Palace, Super Caesar's Palace, yeah! It's Caesar's Palace, oh! It's Caesar's Palace, Super Caesar's Palace, okay, I was a really dumb kid, sorry, let's just move on. And sometimes the predominance of men in anything gaming related makes us forget that there's plenty of women out there who also enjoy gaming too, both modern and retro titles of all varieties. And to help prove my point is pushing up Roses. Roses actually got her start on that guy with the glasses, though I'm not actually sure when as I only became aware of her following her transition away from that site a couple years ago. Thus most of what I know of her comes from her recent uploads on YouTube and the musings on her website. Now, Rose's focus on games mostly spans early stuff from the 80s and 90s, but this is more incidental than intentional because her genre of choice is the inventory-based adventure game, something that's kind of gone by the wayside nowadays. Though there is still a following for such games, and new ones do indeed get made every so often, such as Serena, which Rose's actually did voice work for, playing the title character. Rose's interest in these old adventure titles gives her a serious edge against typical game reviewers because it means she's taking a look, or should I say a second look, at games that the average person has either forgotten or isn't really too keen on covering for whatever reason. Plus she has unique insights into how these games play given her enjoyment of the genre. Although Roses has sort of strayed away from her second look series of videos lately, her recent videos still have the same quality and charm, as she has an extremely sharp sense of humor, making jokes both verbal and visual that take advantage of her source material in ways that make you wonder how she even notices these things. Now, here's such a moment in her video about the PC version of Where's Waldo. However, this game is gold compared to the NES version, but it still leaves something to be desired. The intro music sounds suspiciously like it came right out of a Commander Keen game. Greetings, Waldo Watchers! Type in your name, and then click on me so we can go on our adventure. I guess every one of her videos is loaded with stuff like this. Here's another from her Gizmos and Gadgets review. I'm really not kidding around either. In the beginning of the game, you can choose to play with or without chimps. I chose with chimps because why not? Well, as the levels advance, so do the cyber chimps, and they mean business. They'll follow you around and steal your best parts, then hide the boxes somewhere completely different. It took me a few hours at some points in the later levels just to find my thingamajig. You're supposed to be able to distract them with bananas, which confuses me because I thought robots couldn't eat physical food considering they're machines. Unless... Unless they're actual chimps with robotic parts surgically applied to their bodies. Oh my god, they're abominations. Eh, I have no sympathy for them. They keep hiding my whatchamacallits. This thing. Although, I do wonder if throwing bananas at my enemies will work outside of video games. Now going back to how I learned about Roses, it was both coincidental and ironic, and I blame Clint. Yes, him. Again. In March of 2013, I'd mentioned to Clint in an email what I was planning to do for Edutainment Month, specifically in regards to covering 3D Dinosaur Adventure and then doing a 180 and covering Carmageddon instead. Well, Clint in response mentioned that a friend of his was also going to be covering 3D Dinosaur Adventure. And I thought, that'd be neat and stuff, but he didn't mention who was going to be covering it, nor did he say when. 
Then, not very long after uploading my review of that game, I found out about Rose's and her review of it, which she had uploaded just two days prior. <laughs> Talk about coincidental timing. The neat part, though, was that just like when Clint and I did Animal Quest, Rose's touched on aspects of the game that I'd missed or skipped over, and vice versa, so viewers could easily watch both videos and be entertained by both. Apart from game reviews, Rose's is also a Let's Player, sometimes doing solo LPs, sometimes doing LPs with co-hosts, and she also does live streams too, so while the focus of her stuff is primarily adventure titles, she has tons of insights into them. Viewers may also notice that she has a sort of fascination with death and death in video games. Not in that brooding goth sort of way, but more like in an Adams Family way. So it never comes across as creepy, and if anything, further helps to distinguish her from the crowd of video producers out there. If you want to check out Rose's videos, simply head on over to her YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash user slash Pushing Up Roses. Or you can also check out her website at PushingUpRoses.com. Alas, I don't have any exclusive video footage from her to show you guys. Not because of any animosity or anything, things just didn't work out this time around for completely understandable reasons. This is the nature of the beast when it comes to making videos, or anything really. And you know, that's actually one of the interesting things about doing internet videos as opposed to something like television. We're not competing for ratings or anything like that. You guys can watch our shows anytime you want to. So it's actually beneficial for us to tell other people about the different videos that are out there that are related to the stuff that we do. I mean, it gives you guys more stuff to watch, and it builds our audiences up. It's win-win for everyone. And the other thing, too, is that if you don't like one of their videos, that's fine, too. Like, I mean, everybody has different tastes and entertainment. And so what I wanted to do with this video was just tell you guys about these different video producers who've been really awesome telling other people about my show and give you guys a chance to check out their stuff and see if you like it or not. And if you do, subscribe to them, show them some support too. They, we're here to make videos for you guys. That's what we want to do and I'm out of stuff to say. So special thanks to Clint Basinger, Squall Strife, Anatoly, Pushing Up Roses, all of them for allowing me to put clips of their show on here and for sending in video clips for me to use and many thanks go to all of you who are supporting me on patreon and many thanks to all of you who even aren't supporting me on patreon who just continue to watch the show and spread the word about it that's fine too so that's all i gotta say stay tuned for the next episode of ancient dos games and i'll see you guys then Special thanks go to Clint Basinger, Squall Strife, the fan on my computer that's interrupting this take, Anatoly, Pushing Up Roses, all of them. <laughs> I really should get a new fan for that thing at some point.